everyone. Thank you for joining me today for this short video. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Dawn Hill. And I wanted to make this video because last week I had released something on my social media accounts. And it was a very brief clip from a show aired in 2017 off Sid Roth's It's Supernatural. The guest on that show was Jeremy Nelson, and he was claiming how that he knew how to activate angels. And in this discussion, he shared and brought with him for a show and tell that he had a feather with him that was spiraled in nature. Have a look. As I was praying, a, a massive angel came right through the roof. And I mean, he was probably about eight, nine feet tall, very muscular. And I felt this wind that came into the room. And, uh, and I just knew in my spirit that the angel was the angel of the winds of change. And as this angel went back through the roof, it was like it lasted about 10 seconds. He went back through the roof. I thought to myself, did that just happen? And when I looked down on the ground, I found this. It, I've never seen a feather. It looks almost like a corkscrew the way yeah. it is. Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, the angel of the winds of change is an angel that changes spiritual uh, seasons. They go from winter, they bring a shift into regions and cities or even into people, uh, churches. They go from uh, a place of winter to, to spring or winter to summer or no, manifest no manifestation to manifestation. Now, I had some valid questions as far as how it helps the body of Christ to share such things and even to test them or to judge them. And even posing questions of this could either help or hinder the body of Christ. And I think that's a valid question to ask. And we need to consider that if it's worth sharing and worth discussing, if it's causing a hindrance or if it's helping us to have proper biblical discernment in knowing what is truth and what is error, what is fabrication and what is authentic. And we want to acknowledge that God is a supernatural God and that he can do anything that he pleases because it's his world. We also want to make sure at the same time that we don't check our brains at the door, so to speak, and that we don't believe everything that we see, but that we are willing to test things while still believing that God is most certainly a supernatural God, and we see this attested to in Scripture. So with that valid question, I want to address this and to share some things, beginning with a clip from the American Gospel Roundtable that was recently released. I don't watch the show. Right. So uh, when Stephen Kozar put out uh, respectfully, you know, Dr. Brown, maybe you're not aware of guests, et cetera. I sent that. I, I watched part of it. I sent it over to, to Sid's key man that runs the organization. We talked about it. I said, you guys have to do a better job of, of vetting guests. Uh, he said, what's interesting is we don't have a fundraising department, but we have a six person team who just vets guests. Right. So obviously, okay. That's sad. Right, right, right. So I, okay. I, I, right, right. That's so, but, sad. So in other words, I, I 100% understand where you're coming from. 100%, right? I don't know about anybody else, but I was rather shocked to find out that Sid Roth had a vetting team. That was very interesting. And so I decided to do my own little research just a little bit and to look in this further, because again, it's a very valid point to say, does this help or does this hinder? The body of Christ to consider this and to look at it. Now, I'm going to share some photos with you right now from Jeremy Nelson's social media account, and he's showing a picture of this feather in 2020 on one of his posts, and you can see it's still a spiraled feather. And I want to draw your attention to something here in just a minute as you look at this picture, but he, he talked about this a few times on there and had some other posts, including where he had originally had it aired on Sid Roth. And so you can see those posts as they're coming up on the screen. I also went back to the Sid Roth show and listened to something that was said by Sid Roth himself right before they transitioned into a, a commercial or infomercial break. You showed me something before we went on the air. He had a visitation from an angel and this angel left a feather that I've never seen a feather shape like that. And he can literally pull a piece of the feather off and it'll grow back. Literally pull a piece of the feather off and it'll grow back, back. I've never seen it. I'll show it to you when we come back if you want. Now they did not demonstrate by the way, just as an FYI, that the feather had a piece removed during the show and watching it regrow. So that was not demonstrated, though the feather was provided during the broadcast for everyone to see. But I want to draw your attention to the top of the feather because that threw me off a little bit. 
I couldn't quite figure out why the top of the feather looked different than the bottom. The bottom is actually very downy type appearance and uh, structure. It's very fluffy, but the top part did not have that look to it. In fact, it had a kind of a jagged look to it, almost like it had been cut in a way. And so looking at it, it didn't match the rest of the feather, which again, I thought was a little odd. So given what we know now that Sid Roth has a vetting team, I have appointed myself as an honorary team member. And so I want to look at this for a little bit and to see if we can shed some light on this, if I can help in any way, and I would love to. So I did my own investigative work here, some vetting, if you will, from this show that was aired seven years ago. And so this is what I found. I want to share this with you right now. First thing I did was I made a trip to Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby is a is a great craft store that you can check out and I went on the search for feathers and I was in luck. I found a bunch of feathers. This bag is full of feathers as you can see and if I pull them out right now you're gonna see I pull out all kinds of feathers here. They're all these same ones. They have this downy bottom look to them and they have this top part that is um, shaped differently and looks different. It's not that downy fluffy style. And I even have a couple that I pulled out right now out of that same bag. You're going to see that there's some brown on this one, right? Yeah. So what these were typically found to be, and I did some research on this, um, these are turkey feathers. So turkey feathers actually have this bottom part with the barbs. These are the bigger parts, the barbs that are fluffy. They have a fluffier bottom to them. And then they have this cone-shaped kind of top to them when they're feathers. That's a distinctive thing of turkey feathers, and you can see that. I googled these feathers, actually, and found that turkey and chicken feathers are the most common feathers that are used in arts and crafts supplies, as their feathers are a byproduct in the production of turkey meat and chicken meat. So I went back to the picture of Jeremy Nelson's feather, and I couldn't help thinking that this kind of reminded me of the top of a turkey feather. I also found that Turkey feathers are one of the most common feathers used for making feather boas. And wouldn't you know it? Hobby Lobby, they had a feather boa. And I want you to look at something right here. It's a black one. It's not a white one. But look at this. Will you look at that? How pretty is that? It's twirling. And I did not do that. No, someone else did that. It's not an angel feather. But you can note that it's kind of twirling, not perfectly spiral like Mr. Nelson's was, but you see that little part up at the top that kind of looks similar to his? You see that? Here's another one, just so you can see it. Look at that. And it looks like that when you untwirl it, that half of the feather has been removed. So they've used some sort of utensil to curl it and make that really pretty design. And this is used commonly on a lot of feather boas. I also found out from the feathers that I bought, that you can curl them, that you can shape them, you can do lots of things to them. Found this nifty little thing on the back. I'm going to read to you right now. I'll have it up on the screen. It's on my, my bag of the white feathers. It says this, feathers can be trimmed, curled, or shaped to suit your taste and design. You can trim away lower parts or strip away one side of the feather. Feathers can be curled by pulling over a round or thin edged object using the same technique you might use to curl a ribbon. Now, did you know that you can also use a curling iron? I'm going to show you this right now in this video that I found. Now, for this next technique, I'm using a feather with a very flexible shaft. And what I'm going to do is strip all the veins on one side of the feather for this next technique. This next technique will be using the curling iron, so I've had it on the side heating up for a little bit. And you can see that if I just use scissors, I can get a curve. It's not a problem. But for what I want, I want something more dramatic than a simple curve I can get with scissors. So what I'm going to do is clamp the tip into the curling iron, at the bottom of the curling iron, and then carefully space out and spiral the feather shaft against the hot iron. And remember, feathers are made basically of the same stuff as hair. So they will shape and hold shape as long as you have heat applied to it. And I hold this on for about 30 seconds. I kind of cut away here in a second. But um, as long as you hold it on, and remember, you can burn them, so be careful with it. But you can see that once you release it, you get a very dramatic spiral shape that you can then use feathers in the center of or use on its own. And they will separate a little bit, but you can put them back together. If you're using a very narrow vein left on the feather, like an example I'm about to show you, you can keep them together I more. I also but found it very interesting when I was looking at Jeremy Nelson's Facebook page that someone commented on the very video that he shared from Sid Roth's airing of the show in 2017. Someone commented 
And look at this. I mean, they even acknowledged and said they found angel feathers in their home and they said all of their craft feathers began to spiral as well. And they showed a picture of that. That was pretty interesting. So given all this information, and I'm so thankful that Sid Roth said what he did on that video about that you can pull a piece of that feather off and it'll grow back. You showed me something before we went on the air. He had a visitation from an angel and this angel left a feather that I've never seen a feather shaped like that. And he can literally pull a piece of the feather off and it'll grow back. I've never seen it. I'll show it to you when we come back if you want. <laughs> because that helps us. This does not present a predicament of us damaging the feather. So since it can grow back, we should be able to obtain a sample of that feather so we can have it DNA tested and make sure that it's not something domesticated or that it's um, make sure that it's something otherworldly. We want to make sure that if we're going to claim that something is from God or an angel, that we are telling the truth, right? We care about truth because the fact of the matter is, is that this stuff matters. It may seem like a small matter, but when 798,000 people have seen that video, they are holding to the fact that that is truth and they are desiring that same thing to happen to them and they are trusting that jeremy nelson is an expert in communicating with angels in teaching them how to encounter angels he even has courses online and on youtube teaching people how to encounter angels he's written books about it about encountering angels so the truth matters and we want to represent god in truth in the right spirit right we care about that because I think it's a big deal when over almost 800,000 people are being led to believe that this is the truth and there's potential discrepancy here. So as an honorary member of the Sid Roth's vetting team, I would like to make a kind request that Jeremy Nelson would provide a portion of that feather to be DNA tested so that we can make sure that we are truly glorifying God with the truth and with a verifiable supernatural event. And it would also be great to see a video of that regrowing when he removes it. So I hope you understand why those of us who are calling for proper biblical discernment care so much. We care about how God is represented and we care about you. We care that you are hearing the truth and yet you're not being led astray and deceived. So we look forward to seeing some evidence that the supernatural like this is truly taking place and that this is not something that has been fabricated. And I hope that this has not been used as a way to build somebody's platform or to springboard it, if you will, to gain more influence by going on Sid Roth's It's Supernatural in claiming a supernatural experience. Thanks for watching.